Welcome back again, Moshe Katz of Israeli Krav International. We teach Krav Maga. I guess I should say something a little bit uh, commercial over here. Um, so I'll mention that I write blogs on a regular basis, and I've published about 10, 11, or 12 books of blogs. So buy my blog book if you like my stories. Um, it's my life lessons that I've learned from other people or experienced myself, and which I wish to pass on. So the blogs appear on the website, by the way, which is... Um, we have a few websites, but the one that I work on most is www.yourkravmagaexpert.com with that little dash or whatever it's called, that little line sideways um, in between, in between the words yourkravexpert.com. I think it is yourkravexpert.com. We'll post it on the. Um, uh, it's four we'll words. Post it, your we'll post Krav, it on the video. Your Krav Maga Expert. What's my your website? Your Krav Maga Expert dot com, and then there's a dash between each word. Your dash Krav dash Maga Crash. Right. Um, right. That word dash. I forgot that. Uh, by the way, just on a personal note, although I, obviously I am fluent in English, I grew up in Israel, and I learned my English from my mother at home, not from school. So every now and then, if there's a word that I don't know, it's because I actually never learned English in school. Um, I'll just share the story now as we begin, before going on to my next martial arts episode. Um, I came to Israel at the age of six, before I started first grade. I did attend kindergarten in Boston, Medford, Medford, Massachusetts. I am a Boston Red Sox fan. If you look here, you can see my loyalty remains. I have the American flag, the Israeli flag, I have my Boston Red Sox hats. I am a loyal Red Sox fan. I'm a loyal person, I retain my loyalty and so forth. So we have the, the Red Sox books here. We have here um, a little bit of the history of the Red Sox. So um, even have a little replica here of Fenway Park. So uh, we have some of the classic baseball stadiums here, including Fenway Park. All right, so from baseball. So we came, I came to Israel at the age of six, and I began first grade in Hebrew in Israel. And in Israel, in those days, I'm not sure how it is these days, you begin to learn English in fourth grade. And they divide up into two classes, Hebrew speakers and non-Hebrew speakers. And I was put in the Hebrew speakers because my English was not in a high enough level to enter the English speakers. I couldn't read or write. By fourth grade, I could not read or write English at all, and therefore I wasn't put into the class. Um, but I was very insulted that they put me in the uh, Hebrew speakers class because my English was obviously better than theirs, and I, and I hate the singing. I did not like the singing at all. They would teach English by using songs. So I'm not going to bore you with a song, but the basic song we learned was today is Sunday, all day Sunday, today is Sunday, all day long, tomorrow is Monday, blah, blah, blah. Try that a few times and you'll lose your mind. I came home to my mother, who is a professional English teacher, and I said, Mom, I'm ready to learn English. And she said, I've been waiting for this day. She took out the notebooks, the books that she brought with her from America, and she said, we're going to start learning English. And she taught me English, so I owe that to my mother as well as many other things. So I want to continue now with uh, Arthur Cohen stories. A dear, dear friend, a wonderful man, a man with wisdom of the heart and wisdom of martial arts. So for years, every time I would come to New York, which was at least twice a year, I would contact Arthur. He lived in Massapequa, and I, I stayed always in Woodmere with my dear friends over there. And he would come over and uh, we would train. Sometimes he would bring me to his dojo. Sometimes we would train um, in Woodmere. He'd bring his guns and knives, etc., and we start training. Always exciting stuff. By the way, um, I had mentioned earlier the Jewish Defense League. One of the original members of the Chaya squad was named Chaim Bieber. May he rest in peace. And he sometimes joined us for these sessions and would watch. And he was a man with a great deal of street experience. And Chaim enjoyed watching these sessions and, again, validated what we were doing. Chaim Bieber is a man who I said fought on the streets defending Jews in Brooklyn in the 60s and 70s with the late Rabbi America himself. So Arthur would come and either we'd go to class and train with his guys over there, a fantastic group of guys, I'm still in touch with many of them, and we would work on um, traditional martial arts that is applied to, to real life self-defense. Arthur lost a student, a girl who was killed, 
and really devoted himself to personal safety, in particular with women. To me, Arthur was a walking encyclopedia of martial arts. He knew everybody, a who's who of martial arts. When I met him, it was 44 years of martial arts. You name the guy, he can tell you a personal story. Fascinating. I would just sit there and listen, and listen, and listen. One day, one of his daughters um, joined us, she was in the car, and I turned and I said, hey, you coming to your dad's karate class? And she said, are you kidding me? My car broke down. Dad's dropping me off at the mechanic at the garage to pick up my car. You think I'm coming to karate class? I said, oh, sorry, sorry. Then I said, um, I said, you know, I could listen to your dad talk all day. The man's just fascinating. It's a, a world of knowledge of you name the martial art. He's met the guy, Wally J, Danny Santo, Bill Wallace. He's just talking about everybody. So she said, yeah, we can't get the man to shut up about martial arts. That's why he loves you. You're the son he's never had. You actually enjoy listening to him. We're three girls and, and mom, like, he needs you to talk to. So we were a good match. And after every session, I would just say, Arthur, thank you, thank you. He would just say, Moshe, he, you had this big van, I think they called it an SUV. He would just put his hand down and say, stay safe. And that was it. Not a lot of words, just stay safe. We would drive around New York on the way to class, to or from, driving around Long Island, and he would look at locations that looked very peaceful. I remember passing by a train station, he'd say, if you remember the 2008 murder of this and that, that took place over here behind that wall. Remember that murder, that took place over here. He was a walk encyclopedia of actual crime. He could look at the location and tell you what gang was there, what crime took place over there. He would tell me about the gangs in different locations, different train stations, the gangs of Port Authority, the major gangs that ruled New York. He studied them. One of the things that Arthur taught me was, you don't need to experience everything yourself. If you train enough and you study enough, you can become an expert. Meaning, he never worked in law enforcement. He was never a police officer. But police officers came to him for advice because he read and he studied and he became an expert and he knew what he was talking about. And that's something which I gained from him. Study. Self-defense is not just about the physical. It's with research, reading, watching documentaries, hearing stories, reading police reports, reading professional magazines, finding out about the gangs and how they work. And that's what Arthur was all about. Real life situations and real life training.